In the workshop, a Stuart 504 boiler, part 7. Basic metal working, the boiler base heat sink. This boiler will be mounted on a wooden board, and from my experience in the past that's all well and good, except for the fact that the burner, whether it be gas or spirit, burns the board underneath the boiler. Here's the boiler on its side on the bench. It's very oily because it was right next to my triple expansion engine, which was running very fast, splashing oil all over the place. I'm using some methylated spirit to remove the oil. It's very good at removing oil. It's also particularly good for cleaning glass. So, can I use it as a hand sanitizer? Well, I don't know. I'm sure the experts will let me know. When I used to fly radio-controlled model aircraft, which were fitted with internal combustion engines, by the end of an afternoon's flying, they were very oily indeed. And before putting them in the car to take them home, a lot of the members used to spray them with methylated spirit and wipe it off along with the oil. Many years ago, completely by accident, I found another use for methylated spirit, other than for in the burners of my model steam engines. I was in the workshop one day, assembling something using a long screwdriver. During assembly of this part, the screwdriver slipped, and stabbed me in the palm of my hand, just on one of the creases. And this was OK, it hurt quite a lot and bled a bit. But then after a few days the palm of my hand started to swell up and turn the wrong colour. And by the weekend, when I was flying my radio-controlled model aeroplane, it was even difficult to hold the transmitter. The solution was a bit of minor self-surgery. I always kept a craft knife in my toolbox. So I sterilised that with my cigarette lighter because in those days I used to smoke. I sprayed my left hand, which was the one that was hurting, with methylated spirit, and using the craft knife, I cut into the infected part. And lo and behold, two days later, there wasn't a trace of the infection. And also, no trace of my hand either. Gangrene set in and that fell off. No, that was a joke. My hand is still around. So the sterilised blade and the methylated spirits sorted out the infection in my hand. That's why I'm thinking that maybe methylated spirits could be a good hand sanitizer, Because unfortunately, at the moment, in England, the morons are panic buying. And there isn't any left anywhere. No toilet rolls either. It's very bizarre. I don't quite get the toilet roll thing. I know we all need to use toilet roll. But it looks like I'm going to have to use nettles out of the garden. Anyway, that's enough of that. What I'm doing is making a base for the boiler. This is a piece of steel that is quarter of an inch thick and four inches wide. I cut it on my old Draper horizontal and vertical metal cutting bandsaw and it took quite a while. I bought this piece of metal from Blackgate's Engineering and it's a bit oily, so I'm wiping that off with the methylated spirits too. The bad news is I'm going to have to cut this piece of metal because it's about a quarter of an inch too tall. I could machine a chunk out of each corner, but I don't want to do that. It's easier to just make it the right size, so I've drawn a line across it like this. I could use the bandsaw, but instead, because this is a tutorial for basic metal working, I thought I would use my milling machine. Please note, this works with quarter-inch steel plate. It wouldn't work if it was any thinner. If it was thinner, the metal plate would just move out of the way of the cutter and you'd make a mess of it. The first thing I need to do is apply some lubrication to the top of the piece of metal. I'm using steam oil for this because it's very thick, it sticks to the metal and it's quite a good extreme pressure lubricant. My milling machine is horrible. I must admit, it really is horrible, but I've had it for many years, and oddly enough, it does the job. That's why I've never bought another one. I suppose I could buy a really good milling machine, but with these tutorials, I like to keep them realistic. And most beginners don't even have a milling machine. So I stick with what I've got, the small Boxford lathe and this. I get a lot of comments on my channel. I don't let them all onto the channel because some of them are really stupid just like the people who send me the comments. Don't get me wrong on this, I do not mind criticism. I make these videos in the best way possible with quite modest equipment, so my answer to all my critics is if you don't like the videos, why watch them? You will notice because this piece of steel sticks out of the machine vise a considerable amount, I'm only taking a fine cut. On the first cut though, I realize that I need to move the piece of metal to the right so I can get all the way across it. This job really would have been much quicker on my metal cutting bandsaw, but I'm quite enjoying doing it this way. A comment I often get is, well it's alright for you, you can drill holes in the places you want to drill them. 
My answer to that is yes, and so can you. It's called practice. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And practice makes perfect. As a musician, I've done a lot of practicing in my time. I still do from time to time to keep my hand in. I find that playing on plastic keyboards with lightweight actions, after a while, my technique gets sloppy. So I bought a keyboard with a very heavy mechanical action and I play on that and that puts the technique right again. As I moved the metal plate towards the right and reclamped it in the machine vise, I should be able to get all the way to the other end now. So what about tooling? What am I using here? I have an R8 collet in the spindle. No need for a million chuck. R8 collets in spindles are ideal because there's not much of the tool sticking out from the spindle. I used to have a dedicated R8 milling chuck and this was not particularly good because by the time I fitted the milling chuck into the spindle the whole assembly of the milling machine became less rigid. This is the last cut and here I'm in the outer part of the workshop cleaning the sharp edges off using my belt sander. In this clip I'm also using the auto focus function on the white plastic bottle behind. Now everything is deburred and not sharp, it's back into the inner part of the workshop to see if it fits, and no it doesn't. The inner parts of the casting are rounded. I need to round the corners of the piece of steel to match the curvature of the casting. That was done using my one inch belt sander and now it fits perfectly as you can see. It really is a good fit, I'm getting better with my felt tip pen. Here's the principle, this piece of steel is going to be screwed to the wooden baseboard and the boiler will sit on top of it, and then in turn the boiler will be bolted to the baseboard. Time now for a bit of marking out. I'm not using marking out blue fluid because I can see these lines quite clearly. And besides, the accuracy of the hole drilling doesn't need to be at 100%, I suppose. As the four holes I'm going to drill in this piece of metal are only there to take the wood screws. I think I'll use a centre punch for a change. This is called a spring centre punch. And in no time at all, I have neat centre marks in exactly the right place, or more or less, on the lines. I went over to the drilling machine and first of all drilled the holes with a small drill, because the centre marks were only very small and a big drill would have wandered about. After drilling pilot holes, I opened them up to 3 16 of an inch, and then I countersunk them, using my depth stop on the drilling machine to make sure that the countersinks were all the same depth. That's about it for this episode about basic metal working. Here's a basic piece of metal. I'd just like to say, stay safe, stay well, and thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.